My name is Karen Che, and in the year 2000, I founded International Bridges to Justice. IBJ is dedicated to ensuring that every man, every woman, every child throughout the world has effective defense counsel. Today, there are 113 countries in the world that still use torture as an investigative tool. Of them, 93 have laws that forbid the use of torture and guarantee the accused's access to counsel. I began to wonder, what if we came together? Could we do something for these 93 countries? And I founded International Bridges of Justice, which has a specific mission of ending torture as an investigative tool and implementing due process rights in the 93 countries by placing trained lawyers at an early stage in police stations and in courtrooms. very used to prosecuting as, as a mindset as opposed to saying how can we work to build systems so we spent you know over 100 million dollars prosecuting one guy from the Khmer Rouge who accidentally died in the middle of it you know they were really sad he died because they already spent 100 million dollars meanwhile and in the international community human rights community is very willing to spend this 100 million dollars to prosecute this one guy which may be important but at the same time for thirty thousand dollars you can have a defender resource center open in that one province that will save the life of every man, woman, and child from being tortured. Protection right now, today. But we can't find the resources. We have these, these defender resource centers right now that are about to close because the international community, we cannot find the money for it. So there's, there's something in the way that we think that we need to work on. You know, it's, it's not just about us versus them. It's not just about punishment. It's also about how we can build the systems that allow people to do the right thing. Since the beginning of Karen's work in Cambodia, investigative torture has dropped by 95%. They have since founded a global online justice makers network comprised of individuals from 31 different countries. IBJ also maintains permanent programs in six countries and in the coming years hopes to open up offices in 18 more. What IBJ does is to create the architecture and infrastructure so that the letter of the law isn't just a piece of paper, but becomes a living, breathing reality in the everyday fabric of life. The reason that I focus on this particular area is because I, I see it as being so absolutely doable, like very possible, right? So first of all, it's my own particular, I would call, say, almost obsession from my childhood, this issue of ending torture as an investigative tool. But, but beyond that, I, I see it as being absolutely possible. Like, not, it's not impossible, it's extremely practical. You know, when you look at it, there are a certain number of countries that torture. In those countries, you can break it up by province, you can break it up by state. You can see that if you actually place defender resource centers in those areas and people get early access to counsel, that torture is dramatically reduced. So I see this almost more than any other issue in the world as being something that we can really achieve and we can really do. We can come together as a world community to actually make this happen. It doesn't really matter you know, what tradition you come from. It's really about our sense of people coming together of faith or no faith, you know? But really as a human being to say, these are things that we believe in and, and standing up for it and saying, you know, it's about time that we look at the end of torture as an investigative tool. We can do it as a global community if we decide to, but we really just have to make a commitment to it and then move forward. Despite IBJ's continuing successes, they still face many challenges. Each new country they enter presents new legal structures and unfamiliar customs. At the same time, IBJ's funding is still unstable. While the future is never certain, there are some things that are. Their perpetual optimism and unyielding perseverance. We've reached a point where I, I said to Aline, listen, um, you're doing amazing, amazing work. I said, and we've been trying to keep this project open for 
for a long time, but we've really reached sort of like the end of our rainbow. We can't support it anymore. We can't, we can't pay for the cases. We can't pay you. And, and I remember that Aline looked at me and she took my hand and she said, you know, Karen, um, you know, our, our vision with International Bridges of Justice is greater than the budget. And so we are just going to keep on, keep on, keep on.